All right, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining our webinar today. Uh, today's webinar is going to be about navigating the future, unveiling the power of Xsense MTI series. I'm Indranil Bauker. I'm the product specialist and the field application engineer for the automation and mobility business unit uh, at Movella. So let's get started. All right, just a little bit about Movella. So we have about 200 plus employees at Movella. We are the leading innovators in 3D motion tracking technology since 2000. Uh, and we have about 180 plus defining patents in 3D motion tracking. We have a global presence. We have offices in the Europe, in the Americas region, and in Asia Pacific region. In 2023, actually, we went public uh, on NASDAQ and we have a worldwide network of partners and distributors. We are ISO 9001 certified since 2015. So let's talk about our core technology and our business units. So the main components uh, that each and every unit or each and every product of ours has uh, are the gyroscopes, accelerometers, and magnetometers. Then, uh, based on different functionalities, uh, you have you also get GNSS and RTK functionality, and we also have a camera-based vision navigator uh, product, which is based on the visual audiometry. So, just to note, all these components, we do not produce these components. We procure them off the shelf from major component producers, but our core technology is in the sensor fusion. So we have about 20 plus years of uh, experience in sensor fusion algorithm. And the same technology is used in different business units that we have within Movella. One of the business units is wearable sensor modules. So the applications of this business unit are mainly in motion capture in environment uh, in uh, entertainment industry and uh, in gaming health and sports industry and the other application or the other business unit is the industrial sensor modules uh, which consists of the mti series products so that's what we are going to talk about today now let's look at where our industrial grade movella sensors fall in terms of price and performance. So on the lower end, you have consumer grade MEMS IMUs, uh, which are usually used in the wearable devices such as our smartphones, uh, our smart watches. They have very basic sensor fusion and uh, user calibration. The testing is mainly based on the function and not really the performance. And they're very small components, surface mountable devices and also they have a very short life cycle. They are very cheap in terms of pricing as well and performance is not that great. On the, on the higher end, we have the tactical grade uh, IMUs, which are also known as FOG or RLG IMUs. They're mainly used in the defense and aerospace applications. So these are very high end IMUs. They do not require sensor fusion algorithm. They're pretty rugged but at the same time they're pretty large bulky and very power hungry so cannot be used for all types of applications especially industrial applications and they are very expensive as well uh, you're looking at about ten thousand twenty thousand dollars for each and every piece uh, but yeah they have a very high performance but movella industrial grade mems imus uh come somewhere in between the consumer grade and tactical grade IMUs. And applications are very wide. There's a wide variety of applications such as mobile robots, agriculture technology, marine applications, autonomous vehicles. All of our modules are 100% calibrated. They're very high quality and the sensor fusion is tuned for performance. We have a very wide portfolio which consists of different interfaces and form factors and functionalities. And we have a wonderful 24 seven global technical support team. Our engineers are also very keen on handling the end of life 
uh, cycles of each and every sensor component very well uh, so that we can keep up with the market demands and uh, our products. Now let's look at the MTI series portfolio by technology. Now we have very basic IMUs, inertial measurement units, uh, which consist of gyroscopes, accelerometers, and magnetometers. Now IMUs are basic in the sense that uh, IMUs do not uh, consist sensor fusion algorithm. With IMU units, you will only get raw calibrated data from these sensors. Then we have VRUs, which are vertical reference units. Uh, here is where the sensor fusion algorithm comes into picture. Now with VRUs, you'll get orientation data in terms of roll, pitch, and unreferenced yaw. Now what unreferenced yaw means is that yaw will be zero initially when you power up the device. And it is not based on the Earth's, or it is not a reference to the Earth's magnetic field. Then we have AHRS units, which are attitude and heading reference systems. Here as well, you'll get sensor fusion algorithm and data in terms of roll, pitch, and referenced yaw. Now here, uh, yaw will be referenced to the Earth's magnetic field because magnetometer is used to, uh, to get yaw in this case. Then we have GNSS INS units, which are GNSS or GPS enabled inertial navigation systems. Now, along with roll, pitch, and yaw, uh, so along with gyroscopes, accelerometers, and magnetometers, GNSS INS devices also consist of barometer and GNSS receiver. So, along with this orientation data, you also get 3D position, velocity, and GNSS time. Then we also have RTK enabled GNSS INS units. So the only difference between GNSS INS and RTK enabled GNSS INS units is that with just the GNSS INS units, you'll get up to a meter level of position accuracy. And with RTK enabled, you'll get centimeter level position accuracy. So it's for much more precise uh, position data and for much more precise applications. And at last, we have RTK enabled visual inertial navigation system. So here, the only difference between these two, RTK enabled GNSS INS and RTK enabled VINS units is that uh, here in GNSS denied environments, uh, the output, the position output is time dependent or dead reckoning is time dependent. So you'll get uh, position data only for up to 45 seconds uh, in this case. Uh, and this is to avoid any large uh, accumulation of data or, or error in the, in the position data. But with visual audiometry, that's not the case. It is not, the dead reckoning is not time dependent because uh, camera, output is used to determine position in that case. So dead reckoning is much more robust in case of RTK enabled VNS uh, units. Now this is how a typical in-house IMU design process looks like. Uh, and it consists of sensor selection uh, on the component level. Then we have dedicated microcontroller unit selection then there's signal processing, then the development of OS and drivers, then testing and calibration, hardware and electronic design, tuning of and development of sensor fusion algorithm, and then finally manufacturing and production. All the steps in this process takes a lot of time and capital, but with our products, this is already done for you. Calibration is a huge aspect of all our products as well. So all our modules are individually tested and calibrated in our Xsense proprietary calibration facility. Calibration is done for a complete range of parameters such as bias, temperature, scale factor, etc. All the calibrated parameters are stored on the onboard memory of the device. And during the operation as well, calibration parameters are continuously re-estimated by the MTI onboard processor. Uh, to reach the highest uh, performance. 
We also offer end user calibration uh, after installation. So for example, MFM, uh, which is Magnetic Field Mapper, uh, this is for optimized heading performance. So what Magnetic Field Mapper does is it, uh, it is used for magnetic calibration so that uh, you can account for the homogeneous magnetic field from the object that the MTI device is mounted on. And we also offer lever arm setting for improved position performance. This is mainly for the RTK enabled GNSS INS units. Now let's look at the applications and functions. Now these are some of the major applications uh, of our products, but not limited to. So such as indoor mobile robots in warehouses, outdoor mobile robots such as last mile delivery robots, smart agriculture, uh, such as autonomous tractors, and then marine applications in ROVs. And these are the functions uh, that the MTI products serve in these applications, navigation, 3D position, orientation and velocity, and stabilization. Now let's look at MTI series in navigation. Now there are, the applications can be in multiple environments. So for example, outdoors, indoors, or subsea applications. Within outdoors as well, you have uh, GNSS with GNSS uh, and then in GNSS denied environment. So for example, uh, there are a lot of tall buildings around or uh, in a forest, for example. And in GNSS denied environments, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, our GNSS INS devices uh, allow up to 45 seconds of dead reckoning, but the visual navigation uh, system offers up to 1% of uh, travel distance. Dead so basically the dead reckoning is not time dependent, it's dependent on the distance in terms of, in terms of the Xsense Visual, Vision Navigator unit. And the applications range from AGVs, ROVs, agriculture technology, logistics, drones, and the main applicable products here are the Vision Navigator and the GNSS INS units, uh, such as MTI-8 and MTI-680G. For indoor navigation, there's no GNSS as there's no GNSS signal inside uh, or indoors. And the applications range from AGV, AMRs, warehousing applications. And indoors, mainly VRUs are used, vertical referencing units, just because uh, inside these uh, environments, there's a huge uh, magnetic interference. So you need VRUs because uh, VRU, for VRUs, you all will be unreferenced and not based on the magnetic uh, data. And for subsea applications, uh, also there, there's no GNSS involved. So applications range from ROVs, AU, AUVs, beacons, and mainly AHRS units are used for these applications, such as MTI-3, MTI-630R, and MTI-300, because AHRS units give you uh, earth, uh, a magnetic referenced yaw, or uh, yaw that is referenced to the Earth's magnetic field. Uh, you can use AHRS units for these kind of applications. Then we have 3D position, orientation, and velocity. Similar kind of environments here as well, outdoors, indoors, with GNSS and without GNSS. So for outdoors, the applications range from LiDAR, camera mapping, on drones, handheld applications, etc. And these are the applicable products for these applications. Again, Vision Navigator and then GNSS INS enabled devices. And for indoor applications, uh, we have construction automation and VRUs are mainly used for these kind of applications. Again, same situation where uh, there's a lot of magnetic interference in these kind of environments. That, that is the reason uh, VRUs are most suitable. Then we have MTI series in navigation or MTI series in stabilization. Again, we have outdoor and indoor uh, environments with GNSS and without GNSS. Applications range from VSAT, antenna, 
uh, gimbal stabilization, camera stabilization, and these are the applicable products. Where there's a wide variety of applicable products here uh, for stabilization. Now let's look at our latest 2024 MTI series lineup. Now, as you go from left to right, uh, the form factor, as you can see, uh, the size increases, but also the performance and price increases as well. So we have the smallest series, the MTI one series, which are which is a surface mountable devices series. Then we have 600 series plastic modules, IP51 rated. 600 series rugged modules, IP68 rated. And then we have 600 series uh, with GNSS INS uh, enabled units. So this is the uh, connector for the GNSS antenna. And then we have 100 series products, uh, which are military standard, IP67 rated. Then we have Xsense Vision Navigator, which is also uh, IP67. Now this slide shows us the functions and interfere, uh, interfaces uh, that are supported by different uh, MTI series products. Now, for example, in the first column here under the functions, you can see that uh, it consists of all the functions that we talked about before. So ranging from IMU to VRU, AHRS, GNSS, INS, and RTK enabled GNSS, INS. So within each series, which is one series, 600 series, and 100 series, we have products that support all of these different functionalities. So just to give you a quick note on our naming convention, as it can be a little confusing, one represents IMU, two represents VRU, three represents AHRS, seven for GNSS INS, and eight for RTK GNSS INS. For 600 series, those numbers are in the middle. So 610, 620. And for 100 series, uh, the numbers are in the beginning. So 100, 200, 300, and the corresponding functionality. And these are the interfaces that are supported by each series. Uh, as you can see, we have a wide variety of supported interfaces. Within each series, we also offer uh, development kits, uh, which comes with a development board and all the necessary uh, cables and connectors that you need so that you can start testing right away. Now, these are the different form factors of different products in, uh, in each and every series. So one series is the smallest one with a form factor of uh, footprint of 12 mm by 12 mm. Uh, lowest power consumption, very lightweight and cheaper. 600 series, plastic module. Then we have 600 series robust and 100 series robust. As you go from left to right, the performance and price uh, increases. Now, these are the technical specifications for all the products within each series. Just to quickly note, for one series, uh, you'll get sensor fuse data at uh, max 100 hertz output uh, and raw calibrated data at 1000 hertz. For 600 series products, you'll get sensor fuse data at 400 hertz frequency and raw calibrated data at 2000 hertz. For Xsense Vision Navigator, uh, the max output frequency is 200 hertz. And for 100 series products, uh, the max output frequency for sensor fuse data is 400 hertz. And for raw calibrated data, it's 1000 hertz. Now, this is a quick MTI series product selector uh, that we have designed for you. So, what uh, this is where you can see different functionalities and the products within each series that support that functionality. Now, in terms of software, these are the softwares that we support through our MT software suite. 
MT Manager, which is our graphical user interface, it's a plug and play solution where you can uh, visualize the data, plot the graphs, you can uh, configure the device, set the device, change the device settings, record logs. Then we have Xsense Device API, which consists of example codes in different programming languages such as C Sharp, C, Python, MATLAB. We also have ROS libraries. And we also have embedded uh, examples for SPI, uh, I2C protocols. Then we also offer low-level communication documentation for embedded applications. This is a quick overview of the development and starter kits that we offer uh, within each series of products. And this is to make it easier for testing and uh, making your prototypes and using uh, like using the development kits and starter kits, you can evaluate the functionality and create proof of concept, etc. Now we have uh, worked on a lot of third party software compatibility designs and reference designs as well. So for example, if you're looking to integrate uh, one of these LIDARs, Velodyne, Auster or Hesai LIDARs with one of the MTI devices, then these are also links you can just click on these links and it will take you to the article where we have uh, all the integration steps over there similarly for different processors such as raspberry pi arduino nvidia jetson different software drivers here uh, we have also tested uh, third-party gnss receivers such as sino gnss septentrio trimble different rtk modems modules uh, rs logger data logger as well And if you know, need any more information, uh, these are the links, uh, for example, for if you have any questions, just feel free to contact us using uh, this link, using the contact form here. You can also check out our list of distributors and partners here. For more information on any products, you can go to our manuals and technical documentation here. And for frequently asked questions and articles on different topics, on different integrations, reference designs, you can go to our knowledge base. And for our technical videos about MTI series functionality, you can go to our YouTube channel here. So that concludes our session for today. Now, now we can go uh, to questions. There's a question from Viral here. Uh, he says he's using MTI 320. Uh, and he saw in his first testing, he got a drift of uh, 30 of a degree per 30 seconds. Uh, yeah, with this, uh, there are multiple things that you can do here. Uh, you can use manual gyro bias estimation to reduce the drift. Or uh, you can also contact us using support. Uh, at movella.com and then we can take a look at your data your logs and then uh, we can suggest the right steps uh, to get uh, to resolve this issue then there is a question about can it deliver 0 0.01 degrees of noise at 250 hertz below thousand euro price tag uh, at the quantity uh, emmanuel I'm, I'm not sure which product you're talking about, but uh, we do have uh, products that can uh, support that. And uh, like, for example, MTI 1 series, uh, it definitely does fit the price tag. Uh, you can just contact us and uh, we, we can maybe set up a call and uh, help you find the best uh, suitable product for your application. Then we have a question from Jim here. Uh, is the lever arm between the IMU and the RTK antenna static, or can there be a moving joint between them changing over time? So this is mainly static. Uh, it's a it's a set uh, distance between the antenna and the and the device itself. Uh, we have an article on uh, using the lever arm setting and how to set the lever arm. Uh, setting for for the MTI devices, uh, we can certainly share that with you. So 
Uh, there's a question from Katrina. She's asking, what trade shows will Movila be present at in 2024? Uh, one of the major ones, which is Exponential, which is uh, happening in uh, April of this year, uh, will be present in that. We'll have a booth. Uh, some of our colleagues will also be present in Oceanology as well. Then we have a question from Herman. Uh, the SDK can be used on devices, ARM or RISC processors uh, that use limited size Linux for embedded devices. So we do uh, support. Uh, so there's a limited functionality that is supported on ARM processors, especially. Uh, but we do have embedded examples, uh, example codes uh, that you will find once you install the empty software suite, which you can just download from the uh, so, uh, from the software download section uh, on our website. Uh, and inside the installation folder of the empty software suite, if you go to the MTK, empty SDK folder, you can find all the uh, example codes, including the embedded uh, example codes over there. But regarding the processor, so our entire SDK does not is not supported on ARM processors. Uh, some portion is made uh, public and it is supported on ARM. But we do have an article uh, on what is supported by ARM processors and what is not, uh, and uh, we can share that with you. Then we have a question by Asaf. XVN provides IMU raw data. Is it low cost like MTI1? Uh, so XVN, uh, XVN is, uh, you no, know, it's not low cost. Uh, MTI1 series, the cost is uh, in a few hundred dollars. But for uh, XVN, uh, it's, uh, it's a few thousand dollars. Uh, so there's, there's definitely a cost difference. But also, uh, the performance is much more robust on XVN device as well. And XVN is a little bit of a different animal because uh, it also supports visual uh, autometry, which is uh, which is not supported by MTI one. And also XVN has uh, uh, RTK support. So yes, it'll it'll be a little bit different. Then we have another question here. What kind of item uh, you propose can measure not only angle and linear displacement as well? Uh, if, if your application is outdoors, then I would certainly uh, use a GNSS INS enabled device. But in case of indoors, uh, indoor applications are uh, with no GNSS, or GNSS denied applications, uh, I would. So we do not directly give the uh, displacement data output, but uh, we do suggest how you can calculate the position or velocity or displacement using the acceleration uh, outputs. So we do have an article on that, which we can share with you later. Uh, but. Uh, so it is something that you will have to implement on, on your side. And uh, sorry, and just to answer your question, any kind of, uh, if it's an indoor application, uh, any of the, for example, VRU or AHRS unit should be able to give you, uh, should, should suffice your application. Then we have a question from Herman. He says, should the calibration process be carried out every time the MTI device is going to be used? No, you do not need to uh, calibrate it every time. So all the devices are already calibrated and you can find the calibration parameters uh, if you go inside empty manager uh, and uh, under uh, inside the empty manager, you can find uh, all the calibration parameters. Uh, and for end user uh, calibration, such as magnetic calibration, you just need to carry, uh, carry it out once. And the values will then be stored uh, to the device. And then you will not 
you you won't need to uh, calibrate it again. All right, I think those were all the questions. Uh, really good questions. If you need any more information, uh, please do not hesitate to contact support at movella.com uh, with your technical questions. And uh, we'll definitely uh, help you with, over there as well. All right, thank you so much uh, for attending everyone. And I hope this was uh, helpful for everyone. And have a wonderful day.